Guys, this security researcher, his name is David Schatz, I believe, I, hopefully I didn't butcher his last name, found a flaw in a back-end API on YouTube that allows him to access a private video that did not belong to him. And you might say, Hussein, the, the idea of having a private video should always be authenticated on the backend. How did he manage to access that? And it's very interesting. We're going to read part of the articles, but it makes you think that the checks that authenticate the access to a private video are twofold. There is a layer that checks whether you have access to the private video, and there is a lower level API that gives you access to any video. And pr apparently, he found a way to, through one of the APIs, after many tries, to gain access to that lower level API that gives him access to a frame, a thumbnail uh, on a private YouTube video. So let's go through his journey and uh, see how he did. It's very, very interesting. I think we can learn a lesson or two from this incident. Let's go through this. I'm going to go through part of the article that I'm interested in here. And I'm going to reference it below for you guys interested in this stuff. First thing I did was to upload a video to my second testing account YouTube channel and set the video's privacy to private. So I can use that video for testing. Remember, always only test against your resources and accounts you own. That's a good, good idea. <laughs> of course, you don't want to test against other people's uh, stuff. If I can find a way to access that video with my first testing account, we have a bug. So that's what he set out to do. He has a private video, he has another account, he shouldn't access the first video, the private account from another video, because he shouldn't access that. Yet he managed to do that, right? Let's see what he did. He went, he went through many, many things, because these things usually take days and days of research. And we, as readers and engineers, we just find the final product after his, David's, long journey of work, right? It doesn't mean he found it easily. He did a lot of stuff to do that. So let's see how, how did he how did he find that, that stuff in the back end. With the first account, I started using YouTube, trying every feature, pressing every button I could find, and whenever I saw an HTTP request with the video ID in it, I changed it to the target private video. So <laughs> that's clever, right? So he would using he would be just open I guess dev to tools and then just use YouTube normally and whenever whenever he sees the video ID of the video he's currently consuming he would change it to the private and see do I get an error hoping that I can leak some information about it but I wasn't really getting a success the main YouTube site at least the endpoints I have tested seems to always check if the video was private or not so the back end was solid for that particular site right if it was me i would have given up it's like okay that looks like youtube has a very strict policy to access videos and that api is guarding everything before you access anything to access any video you have to go through that check on the back end and when you go through that check that means every single thing like every single client that access that video information has to go through that check that checks if they, if you own the video right if you're supposed to see it if you're kind of one of the managers in the youtube channel that you can access that stuff think of how you you as an engineer how would you build something like that it's especially in a microservices architecture uh it's it's tricky right in a monolithic, you can reference a library, you can reference a function that checks that. Obviously, you have to always do that check against a database somewhere. There is always something you have to do. And the moment, if that responsibility was put on the backend engineer, some backend engineer will forget to add that check. So it's always a better idea to kind of hide that. Again, it's not always easy. Let's go, let's go on seems to always check if the video is private or not and when trying to request info about the target video they always return errors such as the video is private okay that seems to be working i needed to find another way a great thing to do in situations like this is to try look for other products and services so this so it looks like david is this is not his first rodeo right he've been done doing this before so he knows that well if that backend 
API, some of the backend API that access videos is protected, others backend API might not be. So he's just trying every possible way to access these things, which are not your main target, but are somehow interacting with its resources internally. That's the thing. You want the internal API, things that bypasses these checks. If they have access to its resources, it might be able that they do not have every level of protection that the main product has. This guy knows what he's doing. An interesting target which matched uh, these requirements was Google Ads. This is the product which advertisers use to create ads across all Google services, including YouTube. So the ads you get before YouTube videos are set up by advertisers here in Google, Google Ad platform. So I created a Google Ads account and created a new advertisement which would play a video of mine as a skippable for YouTube users. During the ad creation process, I also tried to use the target video. Again, no success. So again, he found another entry point to the video API access through ads, right? Because in, when you want to play an ad, that's another entry to play a video through ads, right? That could be a different, completely different API. So he said, okay, maybe they did not check that the video is private in that case. Or maybe there's a case that, hey, you can play an ad even if it's private. That would be dangerous, but <laughs> maybe. Again, he wasn't, he wasn't able to find a success with that. Let's continue his journey. What did he do next? What did you do, David? After creating the ad, I started looking at all of the different Google ad feature. The thing was huge. It had a bunch of different tools and setting. Guys, the moment you add features, the moment you add tools, the moment you add bells and whistles, you get ahead of security flaw. You must have a security flaw. The more features you have, it's just by design. More features you have, more flaws you have. It's known, right? I was trying to find anything that could be YouTube related. That was a page called videos where I could see a list of videos used by my advertisement. Clicking on a video, so he went down into the dashboard of the ads. Clicking on video opened up an analytic section for the for a specific video. It had an embedded player, some statistics and, statistics and an interesting feature called moments. What is moments? What does it do? Hmm. It allowed advertising to mark specific moment of the video to see when different things happen, such as the timestamp of when the company logo appear, etc. To be honest, I'm not quite sure, sure what, what the advertising uses, but it seems interesting. Okay, what did you do? So you can create a moment here, right? Create a moment, and what did you get? Look at that, it gets a thumbnail. It's very interesting. Look at what, okay, what did he do next? Looking at the proxy logs, Okay, he didn't tell us that he was using a proxy, but he has to, of course. He has, maybe he was using a proxy to log all these requests. He's not using dev tools. All right, that's good. All right, he's using a proxy to uh, kind of stop into that uh, man in the middle TLS termination proxy to terminate and then make the request on behalf of the client so he can see all, all the requests. All right, something like Fiddler in Windows. I don't know anything in Mac that does something like that, to be honest. I heard of Charlie, but I didn't try him. Every time I marked a moment, a post request was made to get thumbnails endpoint with a body which included a video ID. Bingo. So the host, hey, at the google.com, user agent, you were, oh, he was testing Internet Explorer 6. Hmm, very interesting that he was testing on Internet Explorer 6. Maybe he thought that interest ie6 would would be given some lenient uh leniency from the back end but apparently uh, he was wrong <laughs> but that, that's smart dave that is smart i gotta give it to you all right so get get thumbnail http1 and here's the video id what did you do where in the ar parameter one was the video id uh, that value the key one of this JSON, this video ID. Two is the timestamp moment in millisecond. The response was a base 64 encoded image, which was the thumbnail. I did what I did a bunch of times and replaced the ID to my second account private video in the request. And as to my surprise, it returned a base 64. So you would send your cookie, obviously, to that API. The cookie belongs to the first account, 
right? While the video belongs to the second account, which you should, technically you should not access it, right? So you still authenticate it with the cookie, right? I could redact it. He redacted the cookie, but you should not be able to access it. But I quickly Googled. He got a base 64 response. He converted base 64 to an image. Voila, that got the image, right? So for a given moment of time, he could give the thumbnail for that frame, okay? How do you do the rest? The rest is history. Loop and uh, find out, okay, for a 24 uh, for, uh, frame per second video, uh, that means every 33 milliseconds, you're going to get a new frame, you're going to get a new picture. So let me just loop through a whole video and uh, make requests to get thumbnail. All of a sudden, you get a lot of screenshots. And that's what he did. And that, here's here how he explained that thing. Guys, this is so interesting. Uh, Dave, as a result, got $5,000 as a reward. That is genius. So that makes you think, Security is not something easy. I get asked this question in my Discord a lot, right? How do you become a better security engineer? Security engineering is, is one of the hardest things, in my opinion. And I'm learning new things every single day as a back-end engineer. Because security engineering, you have to know the front end, you have to know the back end, you have to know the databases. And guess what? You have to special, you have first to understand how things work in order to find flaws in them. And Dave understand how everything works in this particular case. He know that, okay, that check, I'm not doing anything in the client. I'm making a request and trying to break the back end. That was his goal, right? And he found a path where a private video was not checked by the API against the cookie authenticator who owns the cookie and who's the user. That check was not made. That tells me that there is there is not a rigid architecture on the back end uh, for YouTube to access videos. You can build a service on Google that hits your private videos directly. Very dangerous. And I don't know how I would build it, in my opinion. Like, you, I would, I would make these APIs essentially private and nobody should access it at all and expose a public API that checks these things regardless. Maybe that API, the thumbnail API to get the thumbnail was done for performance reason. They don't check it. I really doubt it. I think it's just a flop. So what Google did is di they disabled the moments API at all. Uh, I think that's what they did. They disabled, they, they disabled the moments feature, right? Hopefully you, you can see that. Uh, I'm not covering that. So they di disabled the moments feature, guys. And uh, because guess what? It's not easy to just go to that thing that's called get thumbnail and, and fix it. The easiest thing is just <laughs> let's just disable that thing. Like, and I, I'm not sure how they did it. They removed the feature from the UI, or they just blocked the API itself. Hopefully, they just blocked the API. I think that's that's what they did. And when you block the API, nobody can make requests to that feature, and uh, as a result, nobody can. Uh, get access to that. The correct fix would be to correctly have the thumbnail API, this thing, to check the video ID against authenticated. Are you authenticated? Regardless, what, whether it's private, whether it's uh, not just private, like uh, you, you made it listed for certain people. That's another feature on YouTube, right? That's, that's another thing, right? You made it accessible to this thing. And, and Dave, here's an idea for you. Don't make it private. Make it, there is a new feature on YouTube that makes it accessible to certain people. So it's not technically private. It's a different kind of a private. And I'm sure you're going to find some flaw, some API that does not check whether a video is accessible by these certain people. Right, I'll, I'll be I'll be surprised. If, I don't think it's equally equally equal to the private uh, thing, right? And uh, yeah, and knowing Google guys, uh, they they want to do this right. If they found such flaw in the system, they will not just disable the API. They want to revamp all the APIs so that they call the correct method, which always checks the video identity, right? And uh, 
as a result, I'm I'm expecting a complete re-architecture of all the API if the API are not and and making the direct private access to the videos, right? The, the internal API they have to be they have to block that because apparently we just learned that there is a way on the back end to access the private APIs, which is dangerous. Knowing that the whoever wrote the Google Ad service had access to that internal API that gives you the private. Uh, access to the private videos. So, guys, what do you think about this back in API leak? Uh, uh, I'd like to know your opinions below. I'm going to see you in the next one, guys. Very interesting article. I'm going to leave it below for you to fully read that. And uh, good job, Dave. This is a great thing. And, guys, thank you so much for sending me this beautiful, beautiful articles. I love to read those stuff. All right, I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.